everyone, it's Julian, and today I am super excited to be showing you the much requested how to make chill, melodic, deep, all day I dream, style house like Lee Burridge. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video. It's available right at the top of the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. So, we're at 122 BPM, a little bit slower, a bit more chill tempo, and the first sound we got here are the strings, which sound like this. So what's happening here is it's actually a really simple chord progression. So if I take these notes down, you'll notice down here, these are literally just major and minor triads. We just have C major, D major, and then E minor here. And then what I've done is I've just kind of used those chords throughout here. Like if you look at this. So there's the C major, D major, E minor, then another D major, then another C major and then an E minor, and then a D major, before we go back to that chord. So yeah, you can see, really simple chord progression. Again, it's all just based on these simple major and minor triads. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just adding extra notes from the scale on top. And that is how you create this, you know? You want to start with a really strong chord progression, and then once you already have that in there, that's when you go and add, like, you know, these notes up top. And then the key here is, like, the notes up top are also kind of telling a story, too. Like, if you notice, we have, like... And then at the same time that you're getting that... You're getting... So if we play those together... You know, it's like, these are really simple melodies that are happening, but it's the juxtaposition of everything happening at once. And then, like, we just let this note ring out as the chord changes. You know, so it's like, just kind of playing with the notes like this. And again, this is not hard to do. Like, it seems complicated, but if you just start with the basic major and minor chords, and just a really good chord progression, and then you just add some notes that are in the scale, and kind of, you know, pay a lot of attention to making sure that those are doing something strong on their own. You're going to have a pretty nice chord progression like this. So you can see I've done it like, you know, over here it's just even more of this happening. Um, and you'll see also there's these. That A and E. So that's just like, you know, A and then another E up there. So for the sound on this one, with this style, you're going to be using a lot of live sounds, as you'll see throughout this track. So... You see here, I've got this string ensemble, legato. It's just like an Ableton rack here. And then we have this going into a bit of reverb to give it some space and make it really like big and epic feeling. And then speaking of making it sound really big, we have this Haas effect here. So what this is doing is we have two chains inside of this audio effect rack. We have a left chain and then a right chain. And then on the right chain, we have a delay. And so this is what the Haas effect is. It's basically where you take a sound, Split it into the left signal and the right signal, and one of them, it doesn't matter which one you do, but one of them is just being poured, pushed forward ever so slightly like this, and that's what creates the sound. So we're putting this 10 milliseconds forward from the left ear, and because you're hearing the same sound, but just at like very slightly different times in each ear, it creates this big wide effect. So here's without this. And then with it. So you can really hear the difference there, you know, it works great on like a big string sound like this, or like a pad. And it just makes it sit in a different place in the mix, so you can have all this other stuff that's kind of more focused in the center, and still have these huge strings, and not have it fight for the same space. And then it's just going through a bit of drum bust, this just helps to beef it up a little bit, it also brings out the reverb quite nicely. And then we have this auto pan here, which is just set up, you can see it's on the mono setting, and it's doing quarter notes, so... That's what's creating that almost like side chain sort of effect, you know, to make it sound like it's bouncing off of the kick. And then we just have a high pass filter. And that's it for the strings. And then we have this lead. So you can hear this is just playing on top of the strings, kind of adding some extra vibe to what's already happening there. 
And yeah, with these, you know, it's all about just like, it's only four notes here, just real simple. And then it's kind of telling, you know, it's like using the least amount of notes to tell the most story, so to speak. So like, you know, we're doing a lot here. Just by sliding back and forth like this between the notes. And you can see we also have these overlapping notes. So that's what's creating the slide. What's happening here is we have this synth patch in Operator. You can see it's a really simple FM patch. It's just two sine waves detuned a little bit. And then the second one is doing a bit of FM. And then what we have here is I have the voice is set to one. So it's monophonic. It'll only play one note at a time. And then we have this glide on. And that is how you make it slide like that. And yeah, and so that's how we do it. And then it's just all about, you know, setting the glide time to the right amount. Like, I like having these kind of slower, more drawn out glides. So it's like really walking up to the note like that. Then we just have this going through a bit of chorus and reverb for some space. And then I have some drum bus, which is fattening this up. And it's also adding a lot of character and vibe to this because, you know, if you have a sound like this that's really simple and you're just using operator like this, you, you know, you're going to want to add some care to it and some texture. And so that is what the drum bus is doing. It's adding some texture on top and also just fattening it up a bit. And then we have this EQ8 cutting on some lows. Finally, I just have this auto pan doing that same almost side chain like I have with the strings, and that is it for the lead. Then we have this electric guitar. So here's the notes for this one. It's actually very simple. We're in the key of E minor like I showed you, so it's all just notes in the E minor scale. You know, it's like E, D, which would be the minor seventh, G, which would be the minor third, A, which is the fourth, B, which is the fifth, and then we have another E up top. Real simple notes, like if you know the E minor scale, or really just like minor intervals in general, this isn't that crazy, but this is adding a lot to the track because it's adding something kind of uplifting. Everything else is just kind of like chill, kind of staying around here, but then this is like going up like that. <laughs> You know, having it like play off of the beat like that adds a lot. Like if I turn this off, it's still very nice, of course, but it's just kind of moving along. And this is the thing that's really like picking up like that. So with this one, it's just this electric guitar sound. You know, with this style, again, we're using a lot of like live sounds and samples and stuff like that. So it's not really like so much about the synthesis, more so just about getting this nice electric guitar sound. And then we end up just going through some echo, doing eighth notes, and a bit of drum bust to beef it up a bit, and also to bring out the echo. Oh yeah, that's it for that guitar. And then we have this bell sound. So this is just playing one note. You can hear it. it's just playing A. If I play that with the strings, you can hear it. There's without this in the mix. And then with it. So just having that... You know, constantly happening. You can hear it's adding a lot melodically, but what it's also doing is it's adding a lot rhythmically because it's playing on the upbeats. So we're also getting. <laughs> so that's kind of like adding some groove to it and making you bob your head a little bit more. So for the sound with this one, it is just this airy bell, and then we have this going through a bit of reverb to give it some space. A bit of drum bust to fatten it up, and then just an EQ, you know, standard stuff, but just kind of like, you know, it's already a very nice sound, and then we're just doing a little bit more to make it work really well. And yeah, then we have this FM bell here. So the way this is made, as you can see, it's four oscillators here. They're all just sine waves, and save for this last one here, which is one of these, like, drawn-in waves, you can see. And then, yeah, we got the sine 4 from the third one as well. They're all in different octaves. And the last one is actually on fixed frequency, meaning that it just plays one note. And the purpose of this in the track is, you can hear, it's kind of playing off of what this 808 time is doing. It's just to add something sort of like extra and melodic in there. You can see it's just playing E again. We're in E minor. And then we just have this going through a bit of reverb and some drum bus and a high pass. And then on the 808 Tom, it's like I said, these are like really. <laughs> play 
playing off of each other. So this is just like your standard sort of 808 time like you would hear in a lot of sort of deeper house music. And that's just going through some drum bus. And then again, it's just like the way that these two are playing off of each other. It kind of goes back to what I was saying with the bell. Like it's little subtle stuff, but it adds a lot of movement to the track because now you have elements that are going all the way through. You have elements that are just like you have the airy bell, which is ding, ding. And then now you also have this going bam, bam, bam. So it's adding like, you know, it's all these different layers happening at once that create the track. It's not just about having like cool strings or like, you know, a cool 808 sound sound, but it's how it all works together to make this one sound that you're hearing. And yeah, so then after those, we have this hat, the hi-hats and the shakers, which sound like this. So as you can hear, we actually have pretty solid amount of layers here, you can see. So basically, we have these two down here, which are playing like that main, just like a nice fat closed hi-hat, and then this bright open hi-hat. And then we're layering them together to get one really full sounding hi-hat that has everything. And then we have the shakers. So we have like this one, then this one just doing like a constant tick -tick. You can see I've got the velocities set a little bit differently, and this also has a lot of swing on it. And then we just have like these little background ones. And then they all come together to create this really exciting pattern. So this is the thing, like a lot of times, you know, like when you hear like a shaker loop and a sample pack or in these tracks and stuff like that, it's a lot more than just like one shaker going chick 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 chick. -chick. You know, if you do that, it's going to feel really rigid and flat. But what, what's happening here is it kind of goes back to what I was showing you with the melodic stuff. We have, like, different levels here. So we have, like, the ones that are playing all the way through. Coming together. Already, that's making a pretty strong shaker. And then you add in these background layers. And so now we have some that are happening all the way through. And some that are just kind of playing off of each other and doing a bit of call and response like that. And that's what creates the shaker sound, and that's what creates, you know, the groove. And then that's, I just have all of those going through a bit of saturation and a bit of EQ, so here's without that. And with it, you can hear the saturation just beefs it up a bit, and then the EQ just cuts out some lows, and also boosts the highs a little bit, you know, kind of gives it a little bit more sharpness. And yeah, that's it for the hi-hats and shakers. And then we have the percussion. Which you can hear, this percussion is pretty simple. So we have like a nice, just like very strong rim shot like this. You can hear it's got some extra notes in there like this. You know, those add a lot of life and groove to the track. Oh yeah, this one's really more about just like getting this really fat, hard-hitting rim shot like this one that's gonna sit properly in the mix. And also sit right like on top of the kick. Cause these need to kind of be a bit equal in terms of like, punch. And then we have the two percussions. So you can hear, you know, we have like one low sort of bongo sound, this one, and then this higher one. And yeah, that's the dynamic you want to shoot for. Like, if you could have like, like that, that's kind of what you want rather than just like two sounds that sound like exactly the same. You know, having like a low one and a high one is a really good way to get some call and response and sort of bring your track to life. And yeah, and then on the group of that percussion, we just have some drum bus. So here's without this. And then with it, it's just that last thing you need to make all the percussions sound like it's in the same world and make it all punch properly. And I like putting this in a separate group from the hi-hats and shakers too. Like a lot of times, you guys may have seen me do that where you put them in the same group. That can work, but with a style like this where you want like, you know, kind of cleaner hi-hats and shakers that are just really fat. And then like super hard hitting percussion like this. 
it can be beneficial to put them in different groups because like if I put the same drum bus on the hi-hats and shakers it's not really gonna sound right like it's gonna be a bit too sharp and it's not really gonna fit into the style <laughs> And yeah, then we have the kick, which sounds like this. So this one is really simple. It's just going through some saturation. The main thing here is just like the type of kick you're choosing. You know, you want this more like soft sort of 808s kick. Like this one was made with an 808, but then there's also a layer on there of like a more live sounding kick to get that punch and that like. And yeah, it's just like super fat in the low end while also having some nice like to it in the mid range and highs. And then the saturation here is just beefing it up a little bit. Then we have this layer. Which is that same kick. You can hear it's just going like. But what I've done with this one is I pitched it up so it's pitched up an octave. And then I have it going through this bandpass filter here. So it just kind of sets it apart because, you know, if you just kind of take the kick and just like put it in the same octave as the original, you know, it doesn't really have as much groove to it as when you have this thing kind of melting down. And you can also hear it's playing off what that 808 Tom is doing. You're having that like, bah, 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 like that is kind of a nice dynamic as well. So again, it's like the interplay between the different elements in the track. And then that's just going through some saturator. Very similar to the main kick. And then finally we have the bass line. Which you can see, this is literally just following the root notes of the strings, like the chord progression. So like I was saying, you know, it's a super simple chord progression. So when you just put the root notes like this, you can see how simple it is. But it's just like a nice, strong, powerful bass line that holds down the whole low end. And so the way I made this sound is using this technique where basically you take a very harmonically rich wave. In this case, I used a square wave. And then you just filter it down a bunch with a low pass filter. And what you get is you get a sound that is almost a sine wave, but it has a lot more mid-range and like kind of harmonic content on top of it, which makes it fatter and also makes it a bit more powerful because just a sine wave on its own is honestly like you can get some pretty fat bass sounds, but it's a little bit smaller sounding just because it doesn't have that higher harmonic content. So this, you're getting some high harmonic content and really some mid-range harmonic, harmonic content, but then... It's still that like deep fat sound and a big key to this is turning up the resonance if I turn this down See how it's a lot quieter and a lot less fat So that resonance is gonna add a lot of power To the bass line And then we've got the amp envelope set like that And then this is just going through some drum bus and an auto pan just like the one I had on like the other elements up there To make it sound like it's being side chained and yeah, and then I have the low end stuff in a group together, just a little bit of saturation. So here's without it. And with it, and actually I'll turn up the volume a little bit so, so you can hear without it. See how like it is kind of as loud as it was, but it doesn't really have that cohesion between the low end. Like you don't really feel these things like grooving together. It just kind of sounds like everything's playing separately. But then when we turn this on, there we go. Everything feels glued together. You know, the kick and bass are both hitting perfectly. And yeah, it's just like that last little step you need to really make it sit right in the track. This is like a lot of times when I hear tutorials that people make and they get the ideas right, but it doesn't quite sound like the professional track. This is what they're missing. This is literally like the key to so much. It's why I put all the percussion in a group, all the hi-hats in a group is because this group processing like this is really what's going to make a big difference in terms of getting your sounds to sound right and sound professional in the track. <laughs> So 
And yeah, so that is it for the Lolan, and that is also going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe, and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that. It's available right at the top in the description on my van cam for just $5. It's a great way to support me if you guys are enjoying these videos, and if you just want to get some dope samples and MIDI and presets to work with. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.